I'm going to try to remember off the top of my head everything I learned from minoring in art history at art school. It's been a while since I've been through the whole canon. So first off, we got ancient art. Ah, uh, that was the most boring time. That's when we had our cave paintings with cows and horses and shit. And then also our Venus of Willendorf sculpture, which was supposed to be for fertility or whatever. They got a lot of theories about it. Nobody was there, so it seems like it's mostly made up. Then we've got all those old ones that I forget about, like Assyrian art, um... This is shameful how little I remember. Uh, maybe like Sumerian or something. Egyptian art falls into that category. You know all that. Then we've got medieval art. Okay, medieval was all about Jesus. And it had a lot of triptychs. Uh, a lot of really ugly zombie looking Jesuses. A lot of zombie really sad disgusting looking Jesuses and alien baby Jesuses. Uh, we got tapestries back then, all kinds of boring other shit. This is the part of the art museum I usually avoid. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I do. Then we've got the Renaissance. That's when they figured out how to do one point perspective, where you got your room, you got your floor, you got your vanishing point, you can put tiles on the floor, that's what you do in high school. You got your people that are small in the background, and then big in the foreground. You've got the reemergence of the individual artists being able to be famous, that's how we got our Leonardo. That's how we got our Michelangelo. We got our Raphael and the stupid hats, with the stupid hair, the Renaissance. Big deal in the Renaissance too was naturalism. Instead of making everything look stupid, they took from life. After the awesomeness of the Renaissance, when they started thinking logically and being smart, then they had another stupid time called mannerism. Mannerism was when they had that one bitch with the really long neck smoking that hookah. As you can see, I am professionally trained in the arts. So yeah, we had mannerism that had a lot of weird fetish paintings, a lot of weird sexual shit. Didn't make a lot of sense. So, if you notice, so far, we've had medieval times where it's dark and creepy, then the light rebirth of the Renaissance, then back to creepiness, now we're going to make a little detour out of mannerism when we go to the Baroque time. Okay, after all the creepy sexuality of mannerism, artists, especially in Holland, that's where we've got our Vermeer and our Van Dyke. We got people being like, all this crazy creepy sexuality is not going to be good for the Lord. So we've got a lot of very stable precisely composed pictures about how we always need to remember that we're going to die. So we've got a lot of skulls. We got the one of the lady, the like pregnant lady weighing, weighing gold, but it doesn't matter because she's looking out the window because she's remembering that God is watching and even if you're rich, you're still going to die. So Baroque was all about death and reverence and kind of a puritanical approach. So then we've got the total opposite and we've got the Rococo. My art history teacher uh, said that the Rococo was like cotton candy, the cotton candy art movement. Because we've got lots of swirly decorative things, you know, lots of like you know, Rococo decoration had a lot of gold and pastel colors. And that's when we have that bitch on a swing and her little pastel dress being all cute and bullshit. And lots of cherubs and lovers Frenching each other. Because Rococo is French for seashell. It was like cotton candy because it was sugary sweet and pastel pink with no nutritional value. All decorative, all stupid. 
So after the frivolity of the Rococo bullshit, then we have neoclassicism, which is saying, fuck you, Rococo, you're dumb. And we're going to say, fuck all your stupid bullshit. We're going back to values and we're going back to more delineated figures in a space. So with neoclassicism, we've got fucking Napoleon on his horse. So with neoclassicism, we have Napoleon, clear-cut precision, then the swirly bullshit of the Rococo, you know, very dramatic compositions, all about war and honor and legends and historical paintings of Greek mythology and shit like that. Then we had Romanticism, which was more dramatic lighting and shit like that. Don't remember that much about Romanticism, except that's when we had Frankenstein the book, so literary movement as well. Then we have the big revolution that starts taking us almost into modern art, getting closer in, getting closer to the modern shit we can relate to as human beings living in the 21st century, which was realism. I think there were some other shits in here too of like other things that happen between. But then we go to realism. When painters start being like, hey, why don't we just pay the shit going on around us instead of all this historical shit and shit about kings and emperors? This life is pretty interesting. Let's elevate that up to the level of fine art. So in the subgenres of realism, the realistic painters started going away from this clearly de delineated chiari obscuro and all this like kind of academic thinking of how to make a picture and start simplifying it down to just swatches of color representing parts of things in the world. So that brings us to Impressionism, which you all know, that's like Impressionism. You know all your Impressionists, you've got Monet, Degas, all those douchebags. Then, kind of starting to get it, also during this time, uh, we start to get a little bit of Expressionism, which you could say that Van Gogh was an Impressionist starting to meld into Expressionists. You've got German Expressionists doing creepy, weird, dark shit. After World War One, shit starts to get dark with lots of creepy nonsense. Also, we got Monk and the Scream. That's Expressionism. Getting into for real modernism. This could be the beginning of modernism. But then we get into abstraction. Abstraction. We started getting abstract here, and then we're going to get on to full-blown craziness. We got, after World War I, we got Dada, where art is nothing and everything. You got fucking Hugo Ball in his lobster suit doing nonsense poetry. But then at that same time, you got this movement called the New Soclokite, which was a German movement, which means new objectivity, where they started doing shit a little more not as crazy as this, still painting, still making things that look like things we can recognize. But then, a little later in the early 20th century, we've got fucking Pablo Picasso fucking doing his crazy fucking bitches with the crazy eyes all over the place. You know it. So that was cubism. That was just a stepping stone into the later, even crazier nonsense. I should also mention that with the Dada movement was pretty important, because then we've got Marcel Duchamp doing all kinds of crazy, like make, say, planting the seeds for conceptual art, which will come in the postmodern and modern times. So then you've got abstraction. Then you go into abstract expressionism, which is like, you know it, you've seen it. Fucking Jackson Pollock, kind of Robert Rauschenberg, Mark Rothko, all those guys. And that's when we really come into the modern time. We Then we get into pop art, minimalism, which was in like the 70s, 60s, kind of 70s and 80s. And then we've got postmodern art, which is what we have now. Even if it doesn't necessarily make an art object, or even if it's not a clearly delineated performance, it's an art piece. So that's a basic, basic, basic very stripped down what I remember from my art history. I could get way more into modern times. Maybe we'll do a separate video for that. But it's there's so many things going on at once when you get into modernism and postmodernism. You've got 
all kinds of movements happening all over the world independently from each other and then bouncing off each other. And that's our history. <laughs>